feeling of, you never know who's going to be at the pub. I mean, I know, you know, at the session, Dave and Matt are usually going to be there. But that's always a surprise. Um, it's just a fun time spent with people that you want to be around. And it really is all centered around the music. So it's different than just going out to the bar and having a few drinks. It's have a few drinks, but also play this really fun, beautiful music with your friends. Jigs and reels are probably the most common type. Jigs are, if you're a musician, a literate musician, it's a three-quarter tune, or maybe it's a six-eight tune, but it basically is a three, three-beat tune. It kind of goes one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, or I would say energy, 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 kind of a tip for me. And then if you a reel is like a is a four sort of a four-beat tune, it's a four-four tune. And my little thing for myself that I use is rutabaga, 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 rutabaga. So it kind of helps me keep the, the rhythm of an Irish tune uh, real. So are you Irish? I am actually not Irish at all. Um, it's a Spanish, uh, Sicilian, and Dominican. Um, but the, my father comes from a part of Spain that um, they play music that's very similar to Irish music. Suzanne, are you Irish? I am not Irish at all. I'm okay. uh, Eastern European. And the first trip I ever took to Spain in 96, I saw these being played for the first time, and it really just changed my entire life. I mean, I thought they were the coolest things I'd ever seen. And the music was, you know, some of the most um, just inspirational music I think I'd ever heard. Mm. Uh, and he's just a guy playing in the street, you know. How many tunes have you memorized, Suzanne? There's a whole canon, isn't there? Tell me about that. Um, there are hundreds and hundreds of tunes. Um, I used to write them all down and know all the names when I first started playing, and I pretty much abandoned that. I'm still pretty good with the names, but I would say I know maybe, I don't know, a few hundred maybe? <laughs> Two hundred? You probably know like three or four hundred. You think so? Yeah. I would like to write it down one day. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of tunes, but I still show up at a lot of sessions and I won't know a single tune for a really long time playing, so there's that many tunes. I don't think anyone knows for sure, probably 10,000 tunes or something like that. It's probably outrageous amount of tunes. So People the, are still writing them. So who, does, does somebody really know 10,000? I don't know, but you know, I think there are people who know so many that if you start playing one, they'll, like, people that have played forever, you know, like, I don't know, Mike Rafferty or something like that. They play, if you start playing one, they could probably play along. And even if they don't know it, they probably know so many bits of it that they could play it. by ear. You, you really do. You can read off sheet music, but you will also have to hear other people playing and, and to pick up the nuance of the music. Hey Matt, is Irish music kind of orthodox where only certain instruments are allowed or can other instruments from other cultures come in pretty easily? Oh no, it's, um, it's the type of thing where um, yeah, the Irish are, are wonderful for sort of stealing instruments. I mean, for example, one of the instruments that plays the bazooki, which is definitely a Greek instrument, um, and I think it made its way into the Irish tradition around 1960. Two separate people 
on trips to um, to Greece, brought them back and started playing them in a, in a very Irish style. And from there on, they were, they were basically a real part of the, the traditional music. <laughs> So, all the instruments are stolen, no Irish need apply, and no one can read. But, in the end, the safe haven Irish music session is about the three C's. Community, creativity, and crack.